I'm Tom Trowbridge, and I'm joined by my co-founders, Evgeny and Dimitri. We appreciate your time. First, some housekeeping. Evgeny and I are going to give an overview of the platform, and then we're going to turn it over to Dimitri, our chief technology officer and fellow co-founder, to give a technical architecture overview, and then do a demo and show exactly how easy it is to build and compose applications on Fluence. We want you to understand what we do and why and how it works and why it's important to you. And by you, we mean developers, but we also mean the general broader community in the rest of the world, because we think what we're enabling is important for everyone. For your viewing enjoyment, we're doing this all live. There is no net, so wish us luck. Some of you have heard of Fluence a while ago. We started in 2017, but for others, this is the first introduction to Fluence. So what have we been building over this period of time? We've been building an open application platform. What is an open application platform? It's a platform where applications share data and users seamlessly and without the risk of being cut off or disabled. And why is that important? It's important if we take a step back and think about how the internet developed. The internet brought about a great innovation by pulling together disparate data feeds, disparate data, and allowing people to collaborate across all kinds of platforms. And the innovation that was enabled um, has brought us to the world we live today. But over that period of time, we've seen a new model take place, a model that has really monetized the data extraction. And what that means is that large platforms have gathered data, they have monetized that data, and they've used those returns to generate excess profits and then have um, built their developer teams, added more products and made it impossible to compete. And if you look at a list of companies that you've all heard of, but have gone away, you can see the graveyard that these internet giants have filled. And the list of companies that you haven't heard of that have died is even longer. And the list of companies that haven't even started because of the power of these large firms is even longer. And so what's more powerful though than these big internet companies? You are more powerful. The global developer community is far more powerful than any one company. And this brings up kind of a, a book by Eric Raymond, written in 1999 called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. And in that book, he argues that the original software model was built around a cathedral model where a centralized um, authoritarian regime could create something wonderful, but it takes a huge amount of resources to collaborate and pull everyone together when you're in a hierarchical structure. And what he recognized with open source really um, became the real poster child of was the bizarre model. And in a bizarre the collaboration takes place among relatively autonomous um, actors and they collaborate, develop without leadership, without overhead. And with that model, you can create things far faster and innovate far more easily. And I think we've all seen in the software world, the open source bizarre model really take hold and be the future of software. I know all of us are deep believers in open source and this whole community is an open source community and we can see the success that that model's enabled. But that model hasn't yet taken hold in applications. And that's what we're here to enable. And so if given just a chance, just an opening, some of the right tools, we think the global developer community can innovate and create a bizarre model, just like it has for open source software, but for open applications. And what are those tools? First, you need a distributed computing protocol to host applications in a way that you trust and know that your access and your data can't be turned off. You need to know that when you build an application, that application can't turn around and disable your access. That's critical. Second, you need a scripting language that makes it incredibly easy to build. We've built the Aquamarine language, which enables this. You need to be able to compose applications from existing pieces and existing code and existing applications very quickly, very easily, very simply. And third, you need to have an economic layer, a blockchain-based economic layer that tracks software usage and allows monetization of all the work, development, and innovation that goes into building these applications. 
And that's, and once you pull those three things together, you have an engine for a global ecosystem of innovation. And that's our mission to empower the next wave of internet innovation. We want to make it easy and fun to build and rewarding as well. And to explain more about how we do this, I'm going to turn it over to Evgeny to go into detail on the building blocks and the actual mechanics of how it works under the hood. Influence. Great. So thank you, Dimitri. We hope everybody um, understands the power of what that is and how easy it is to create those applications. You know, we, we showed those, those are chat apps. We thought the Influence isn't designed to build chat apps, but it's the easiest and most intuitive way to show how applications can be built one on top of the other and how features can be added. And so we thought that was an appropriate demo to kind of demonstrate very quickly and simply what can be done. But if you really think ahead, we think this composition could enable applications that historically have had no relationship to each other whatsoever to combine components. And so you could see a, a message service combined with, you know, maybe a, um, a transportation, you know, service or, you know, healthcare combined with um, banking. I mean, there's a variety of whole different ecosystems could compile and use the same um, pieces together. So what are, how do we get there? And so we're launching today the Aquamarine Network. This will be live in a week or two. Um, so you've seen it, it works, um, but we'll, we'll alert everybody here when you can actually use it, which is just a week or two away. And then next year, around summertime, we're gonna launch the, um, the uh, economic layer, which is a blockchain enabled um, licensing system, which is what allows um, the economics to transmit throughout this network and allows rewards to happen for every single piece of this ecosystem. Um, what, are we, what, what, what are we doing next? Also, we're publishing two papers. This year, we're gonna publish our distributed computing protocol paper. Um, very excited about that, so look for that to come. And next year, we're gonna publish our crypto economics paper, which describes in detail the economics and how that economic layer works um, and how, how it's all put together. So those have pretty much been written. They're just, just some final touches finishing on them right now. Um, we're actively hiring. These are four open positions right now. We'll be adding more positions over the coming weeks. So apply to fluence.network um, fluence slash jobs. These are the open positions, all developer focused. If you are interested in joining us, but then don't fit any of these particular roles, certainly reach out because we have a lot to do and we're gonna need to fill a lot more roles. Um, we're a distributed team, so it doesn't matter where you are. Um, we just want really motivated, hardworking self-starters um, who believe deeply in, um, in what we're building. So thank you for that. And um, really appreciate everyone, everyone's time. And I wanna turn to Evgeny to talk about kind of the, the UIs that we're building. 